We have an update coming to Pokemon Unite on the 15th at 2100 military time. That's 9 p.m. my time, Monday night. What is going to happen in this anniversary update? Let me tell you what you should expect. Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw. Quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Warcraft Rumble, Blizzard. I love you. Thank you for sponsoring this video and a ton of videos on my second channel, my B tier. Go ahead and check it out in the link below. If you haven't played Warcraft Rumble yet, you really should start. Season 7 is going to be crazy. We have a new family coming to the game. I cannot wait. So please check that out on my B tier. Links below. Thank you, Blizzard. First, we have the obvious. This update is the anniversary update that's going to bring Ho-Oh to the game on the 19th. We also have a battle pass that's coming soon for Charizard right here. We have Delphox Hollowware. We have Candle up there getting a beautiful piece of Epic Hollowware and more that we have found in a data mine leak. We know of some of the balance coming essentially for sure. They could just be testing it, but usually what they have on the PTS makes its way to the main game. And then we have a lot of things that we can relatively uh, guesstimate to be coming to the game, which I'll hit you with here in just a second. I talked about about this in a previous video so I'm not gonna go crazy in depth to all of the moves but if you want to check that out I have a Cerule Edge video on my channel that is talking about these buffs. Cerule Edge is getting a series of buffs. Psycho Cut, Bitter Blade, Flame Charge, and I think Phantom Force as well. I think all of them are getting buffs across the board. There's kind of some changes up and down with a few of the moves, but in general, Cerule Edge is getting buffs across the board. No buffs to its Unite move. This is generally done with a Pokemon that has released and after a few weeks of release has not seemed to climb the win rate charts at all. For whatever reason, people are having trouble winning games with Cerule Edge. It's getting a series of buffs. I do have to say personally, I think Cerule Edge is doing pretty well. I play almost entirely solo queue, and this is me playing Cerule Edge this season. I have about a 62% win rate of my 43 battles. I think these buffs are going to be nice. Hopefully, they're closer to what happened with Meow Scarada than what happened with some of the other, you know, powerful Pokemon that went way too strong. We're just going to have to see. But for whatever reason, the community is having a hard time with this Pokemon. It's never been over 50%, so it's seeing some buffs, which makes sense. I also talked in that video about Buzzwool getting some buffs. Buzzwool is an interesting one because it's getting buffs to leech life. At least that's what it looks like. It activates much faster against opponents, allowing you to do damage in a huge burst. I don't know if there are any other changes to Buzz, but that is what I found on the public test server. So those are two changes that we kind of know of. Now let's talk about changes that we essentially know are coming. Every time there's a battle pass, the Pokemon of that battle pass gets some sort of buff. They at least get looked at by the development team. Now some don't need as much as others. In fact, there are times they haven't gotten buffs, but they were kind of crazy overpowered, like when Zacian ended up getting a battle pass, that didn't get a buff. But in general, if a Pokemon gets a battle pass, especially one that's been out of the limelight for quite some time, they end up getting a series of buffs. Charizard is getting this battle pass. That means Charizard is going to finally get some buffs. It's been a long time since Charizard has actually been looked at in any meaningful way. It did get the level seven change that the other starters got, which was pretty cool. But other than that, and a small change because of Muscle Band not working on it correctly, or at least not working on it how it did before, Charizard hasn't received anything meaningful in a very long time. We are very likely entering a Charizard meta with this battle pass. It's a Pokemon that's always been on the precipice of being good enough. And I think with this buff, whatever it is going to be, it will push it over the edge. There are a lot of directions that they could go with this. Of course, the Fire Punch and Flare Blitz build is the less common build, the lower win rate. They could definitely see some buffs there. They could see overall survivability or damage buffs for Charizard. They could see really cool stuff, like when they changed the way Flamethrower was cast. I would love to see something like that. And then one of Charizard's biggest strengths and also biggest opportunities, its Unite move, could see some serious changes. If you lowered its Unite move cooldown made it so its Unite move was not really cancelable the way it was before. Honestly, that in and of itself would probably make Charizard a meta pick already. We're going to have to see what they do, but I think it's not even I think. Without question, we're seeing Charizard buffs. We just don't know what they're going to be. Taking a minute to focus on this image once again from, you know, kind of the ho oh announcement of the anniversary, we see this beautiful piece of epic hollow wear for Chandelure coming out. Chandelure is good. 
sometimes pretty dang good, but not amazing, not great, not like A plus tier or anything like that. So there's no question we're gonna see some Chandelure buffs. This is an interesting one because it's a pretty straightforward, long range special attack mage. And I wonder what they're gonna do to it. Of course, they could always raise damage. They could have its moves do increased effects, right? Like the slow is more intense from Poltergeist or the length of the time that you're in, in prison is longer, it lasts longer. Things like that could always be done. And of course, you could just amp up the damage on this thing. Those two, Char and Chandelure, I think are definitely going to get some buffs from this image alone. I, I don't think there's any question. Another one that's in that image kind of in the background is Delphox. It looks to be the start of that battle pass. And oftentimes the start of the battle pass doesn't end up getting touched. Serena was the start of this last one. Talon's been the start, didn't get anything. Uh, there's just a lot of like the level one parts of the battle pass that don't get buffed. And I don't really think you need to do much to Delphox. It's actually pretty amazing. And if they buff Fire Spin again, I'm gonna lose my mind. So I think you're probably not gonna see much of a change for Delphox. Now, there are some other Pokemon that we can possibly assume are getting some changes based on the Hollower coming to the game and based on their performance in the game currently. We have some skins coming out. This has been data mined from El Chico Eevee. We have, of course, Dark Lord Charizard for the Battle Pass, Dainty Style Chandelure, Dark Suit Style Urshifu, which is poised to be an epic piece of Hollower. Urshifu is the lowest pick Pokemon in the game. It's one of the lowest win rate Pokemon in the game. Water Bear is just about awful right now compared to a lot of the all-rounders in the meta. Dark Bear is pretty good, but also quite specific. I think without question, you are going to see some changes for Urshifu. I just don't see a reality where they don't mess with this Pokemon, given that they're giving it epic Hollowware and no one is playing it. And a lot of that is because it is kind of underwhelming. We, of course, have Ho-Oh getting Hollowware. Space style. Azumarill. This is an interesting one because Azu isn't a, you know, absolute bottom tier pick, but it is a pretty low pick rate inside Pokemon Unite. We got it in there. And I also don't think it's completely overpowered. I think they could actually buff its end game, or I guess I shouldn't say it's completely overpowered. I don't think it's overpowered at all. I think it's pretty good actually, but they could probably buff its end game slightly if you wanted it to be more competitive with some of the other all-rounders. We have Delphox, also part of the Battle Pass. Space Style, Mr. Mime. This is with the membership, and Mime's doing great right now, so I wouldn't expect it. And now here's a really interesting one. Zerko Trading Style, Sableye. I'll get to that in one second. We also have Ninja Style, Umbreon, and Zoroark. I don't think Umbreon needs a buff uh, at all, and I think Zorark actually needs a nerf. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Hey, Umbreon could as well. Uh, let's talk about Sableye really quick. So for the longest time in the shop, we've had this little guy in this suit, and it's actually bizarre that we haven't had a piece of hollow wear for it already. Well, we are getting it. Sableye will be wearing this, and I do think Sableye is in a position to receive some buffs probably to Shadow Sneak and Faint Attack. You could buff that, and I don't think that would be crazy. You also could give Sableye a little more survivability, and I don't think that would be nuts. Considering this Pokemon has actually been seeing some competitive play by a few top teams around the world, I don't think they need to buff this thing like crazy because it will be picked an insane amount, but you could see some buffs to its underused part of its kit for sure. Also, I can't believe we don't have this already, but I'm glad they're doing it. So I've talked a little bit about the buffs that we should be expecting, but now let's talk about some of the nerfs we should be expecting, and then let's also talk about some of the nerfs or buffs that we really don't know are coming, but could easily be in this update. I feel like with Unite, usually their updates focus on a few things that are completely overpowered, and a few things that are like mid of the middle of the road, but they want to make them a bit better, and then they highlight a few things things that are pretty unused. And I think given a lot of what we've talked about here, things like Shandy aren't used enough, or Shifu, that'll get some nice buffs. Charizard will be way more meta relevant. There are a few other Pokemon I think they could touch on, but let's talk about nerfs really quick. There aren't a ton, but there are a few that they could absolutely go for. First is gonna be Phalanx. Phalanx 100% deserves a nerf. This thing is too powerful. It's been too powerful since release. They could slightly change its kit around, like they could make beat up a little bit more viable and then they could make iron head no retreat a little less viable maybe a slight buff to its unite move but you balance the kit out a little bit more and it kind of resets its win rate a little closer to maybe being in the 
you know, 53% range instead of like 57% on Iron Head No Retreat. The burst is just too insane, and it's making it so that every competitive game, it's one of the first bans that you're going to see. The next, of course, is Maridon. Maridon is still extremely powerful. I don't know if they're going to be messing too much with any of the EX Pokemon, but you could probably nerf Electro Drift and Parabolic Charge a little bit still, and then that Pokemon would be much more in line with the rest of the roster. We also have a few all-rounders who are in this weird spot, right? We have Blaziken, we have Mimikyu. These Pokemon recently got buffs. I don't think they're going to be doing anything to them. However, they are really, really powerful, so there is a reality where they mess with them a little bit. We're just going to have to see what they would actually like to change about these Pokemon, if anything, in this patch. And then, of course, you have the crazy defenders. You have your slow bros. Just got a buff. I don't see that changing. You've got Umbreon. It just got a battle pass, but it could probably probably get a nerf that some of the defenders are so unbelievably good but I don't think we're gonna see a ton of changes with them in fact I wouldn't anticipate a ton of nerfs with this patch in general then we kind of enter this interesting area of Pokemon that are really unused not winning a lot and could use some cool buffs or even kind of the Duraludon style rework that we saw a little while back uh, in our last patch so I think that's a really cool way to bring a Pokemon back to prominence there are a few Pokemon that could get something like this or at least get some buffs. Lapras, I think, has been over nerfed. I would like to see this Pokemon slightly buffed. It's just being outclassed by all the other defenders right now. Machamp is a weird one. Machamp is always fine, but there are all these all-rounders that are just crazy good in the game. They're just so much better than Machamp. We can see a lot of changes for Machamp. If you watched my video about the passives, you could see how Machamp's passive is so underwhelming. They could do a lot more with it. I would love to see some tune-ups for Machamp. Of course, Gengar is always on this list. Gengar is like, I don't know what you do. It's really hard. I would love it if you get you know, Gengar into more of a rework territory than just like buffing its damage because at that point, it just becomes a delete button and then it's a huge problem. Like, Gengar is a bit of a mess the way they've created this character and I could see a reality where they try to just change that entirely. That would be really nice. Another weird one is always Greedon. Extremely low pick rate, doesn't really fill its role as a defender, at least what your team would think it would be doing. This bizarre harasser. You could honestly give a, you know, kind of rework-ish style to Greedon, make it maybe do less damage, but its moves created more of a support effect so maybe belch had a mini stun and bullet seed like had a slow and a debuff so you were like tankier but then the damage has been reduced i don't know exactly how you'd want to do it with greedon but that pokemon is just such a weird one it's always in such a weird position and then of course we have some interesting move changes that we've seen in the chinese beta version of pokemon unite so you think you see things like wigglytuff's rollout letting you control the direction it move you have mature champs dynamic punch you have a lot of different things that are actually they behave differently in the game i don't think we would get changes like that in this kind of patch but that's always something that could be on the horizon let me know what you'd like to see most in this upcoming patch and again big shout out to blizzard for sponsoring this video thank you all for watching thank you for listening i love you and i'll see you all next time mm -hmm. we did it